All right, guys, welcome back to Beer Budget Moto. My name is Shane, and today I want to do a uh, one year review of my Griffin GT712 dump trailer. I use this trailer for my junk removal business. I do junk removal and property services, uh, mulching, stuff like that. I do shed and playset removal, um, demolition of old porches, decks, patios, stuff like that. Um, I'm not a landscaper, but uh, anything that requires any sort of demo and removal is what I use this trailer for. So this trailer is seven feet wide, 12 feet long, hence the name GT712. It's a Griffin brand, so Griffin trailer, seven foot by 12. It's a 12,000 pound dump trailer, uh, two 6,000 pound axles. It's a twin hydraulic ram lift, power up, power down. Uh, so what I wanted to do today was just do a quick one year review. I've actually had the trailer for about a year and a half now. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information about these trailers online as far as reviews or um, anything like that. I bought this trailer at a local trailer shop uh, here in Middletown, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, so I just wanted to do a review. Main reason because these are cheaper dump trailers. Um, they're about the cheapest dump trailer this size that I could find. Uh, so with that comes its flaws and I just wanted to point out some of those items so that anyone who's interested in looking at these would know if uh, you know the downside is worth uh, buying a cheaper trailer or if your needs require you to buy something a little more expensive. Um, so let me just say again I do junk removal I don't put um, 10 or 12,000 pound skid steers or mini excavators or anything else in this trailer. I haul at most maybe two tons of junk and debris, um, you know, a couple tons of mulch, uh, stuff like that, lumber from deck removals, uh, shed removals, play sets, stuff like that. So I think the most I've ever had weight wise inside the trailer is about two to two and a half tons, so four or 5,000 pounds. Um, which with the weight of the trailer, it's about 4,500 pounds empty. So I've never had it, you know, more than uh, about nine, nine and a half thousand pounds. So nowhere near the 12,000 pound uh, rating that it's uh, set for. So again, keep that in mind if you're a landscaper or hardscaper um, in any kind of construction and you're going to be hauling equipment in this trailer, it might not be uh, what you're looking for. But uh, anyway quick overview again it is seven foot wide 12 feet long it does have the four foot sides uh, because I do junk removal I wanted the cubic yard capacity uh, so a low side dump trailer really wouldn't be helpful to me I wanted the high side so I can fit more trash in it um, start at the front here it does come with an adjustable coupler uh, that's pretty nice comes standard with the adjustable coupler um, takes a 2 and 5 16 ball, you know, safety chains, breakaway cable, etc. It does come with a uh, drop tongue jack. It's greasable. Uh, so it comes with a pretty nice jack, actually. Here is your pump box. You can see uh, it's metal, not plastic. It does have a lockable latch on it. Comes with an interstate battery. Uh, they're actually local to us in Pennsylvania, so I'm guessing that's why. Um, it comes with a built-in battery tender. You can see my battery's good. Uh, Hardwired power up and down, hydraulics, and uh, and uh, hydraulic cylinder ram here uh, to hold the box open. So the box does have some drain holes. I don't know if you can see here, it has a couple of these, I think three throughout the bottom of the box. So if it does get any kind of water in it, uh, there is a way for water to drain out. Um, it has this little cutout right here in the side of the box. I actually use it to plug my uh, trailer plug. I just sit it in here and keep the plug on the inside of the box. When I'm not using it, that keeps the plug out of the weather and uh, keeps it from corroding as fast, but it's actually so that you can pull your remote out and let your cable stick out through here and then close the box if you're outside and it's raining you know or inclement weather when you're dumping that way you can keep rain and snow and stuff off of your pump connections and your battery but still run your cable out and run your um, 
run your body up and down. Uh, one of the things that I really don't like about this trailer are the safety stands. Uh, it has safety stands, one on each side. You can see I'm using this one right now. That one over there is not really in place. I don't know if you can see that, but they're not on the same angle there. Uh, the reason that that one's not in place is because these safety bars are not connected to each other. Uh, so unless you've got a seven foot wingspan and can hold both of these safety bars up at the same time and also control the dump body to bring the body down onto the safety bars, uh, you can only use one at a time. Um, so I kind of wish that uh, it either just had one bar so that you didn't have the extra weight and you know hassle of carrying around a second bar that you really can't use or if they were connected in some way. They had a bar that went across that if you picked up one, it lifted the other from the same side. That way you could do it with one hand because you need one hand to lift the safety bar and place it um, in your cross rail here and you need another hand to lower the, the body down onto that safety rail. Uh, so that's one of the things I don't like about it. Another thing that's kind of goofy is you can see these cross members here. Uh, the trailer frame itself is made out of like two by six material but then they use these like two by 10 uh, C-channel braces uh, to kind of put everything together. So from the front and from the side, uh, same thing on this side here, you know, it, it just looks kind of goofy because you've got this hanging down. It's a sharp corner there. Um, you know, it sticks down lower. So you run the risk of possibly catching that on uh, something, you know, if you're going over, um, you know, you're running through somebody's yard or uh, you know uh, a dump site you know it's just kind of weird that that sticks down like that I don't know why they wouldn't have just used um, a 2 by 6 material that would have fit in there and tucked up out of the way uh, they do run all the wiring through the frame here uh, which makes it kind of nice um, I do worry with all the holes here in the frame that uh, there's gonna get water and dirt and debris in there and it's gonna rust out because there's no holes along the bottom edge for anything to drain out. So um, I worry that that's gonna cause a ru uh, rust issue in the future. Uh, speaking of rust, you can see, I just washed this trailer literally 10 minutes ago. You can see all the rusty water spots along the frame on that side as well. Um, and mainly what that's coming from is like this right here. Uh, you can see the, the paint here is just flaking off. Um, a lot of this section is flaked off and missing. This is the bottom rail, so this rail rubs on this rail when you're driving down the road and rattling and hitting bumps, etc. cetera. Uh, so there's some friction there. And uh, because of that, it's just wearing this off and then you can see this metal underneath is getting rusty already so that concerns me i feel like i'm going to have to constantly you know once a year scrape this loose material off and repaint it or coat it with some sort of undercoating or something that's maybe a little more durable to uh, keep this trailer lasting as long as possible um, so the the rust and the paint quality is something that uh, you know, I would kind of consider on this trailer. Uh, it does have adjustable pins for different uh, heights and weight capacities for the rams. This is just where it was set up when I bought it and for my uses it works out well. It does have ramps here on the side. They don't slide into the bottom. I kind of wish that they did because quite frankly I don't ever use the ramps because again I'm not loading equipment onto this trailer. But it is nice sometimes to have these if you're trying to push something heavy up into the back of the trailer you can actually you know slide it up the ramp uh, so i do carry them with me as opposed to just yanking them off and storing them in the garage i do carry them with me but i wish uh, you've got all this dead space underneath the trailer here and they could easily have designed a way that the ramps would fit underneath um, again quality of the trailer this trailer is about a year and a half old. You can see um, you know, some of these welds here. You can see all the porosity in these welds. You can see how things are rusting. You know, again, the paint on this, this ramp right here. I've never driven any equipment up these ramps and they're already rusting. 
welds like this here. You got a big nub here. You got porosity and a weak weld there. Um, there's a really bad area back here on the body of the trailer. You can see these welds just really, really not, not great. Um, you know, that, that looks really bad. Um, so the quality, the fit and finish of the trailer is, is not excellent. Um, it does come with these nice wheels. They're uh, coated in a rust resistant, it's almost like a black chrome finish. They look really good, they clean up nice, and so far uh, the wheels are holding up really well as far as uh, corrosion and pitting and whatnot. I'm in the northeast, like I said, so we do see a lot of salt and road grime, uh, but so far the wheels look really good and uh, probably will, from the looks of it, possibly outlast the, uh, the trailer itself. Um, you do have all LED lighting built into the back, um, across the back here, LED lights, all of that. You've got grease certs on all of your door hinges, uh, so that's actually pretty nice. You've got stake pockets on all of these uprights here, or at least most of them, so you could actually put higher sides on the trailer if you wanted to. As you can see, I've got the trailer all lettered up for my business. Uh, the latch, latching mechanism is okay. Um, I did have this bottom catch actually break off on me at one point. That's because the door got slammed closed. The wind caught it, slammed it closed, and actually broke this lower catch. So I went to the store that I bought the trailer from, and they sell a, a door handle replacement kit. So I was able to get this piece, weld it back on, paint it black. And so far it's holding up okay. Uh, one thing that I do wish, the way that they have this mounted, the handle where it swings is all welded. Um, you know, this is welded. These lower catches are welded. And it's all inside of this angle iron. Unfortunately, the angle iron's all welded on. So one of the things that really bothers me about this trailer, as you can see, I've tried to grease it up to alleviate that problem. But when you lift this handle up and swing this open to open the doors it's very loud uh, it's uh you know metal on metal you've got this bar spinning inside this angle iron and there's no grease certs or anything like that along this handle assembly that you can put grease in there so i've tried to just get creative and just dump as much grease and wd-40 down in these openings as i can to try and eliminate some of the noise uh, but it is somewhat frustrating um, you've got this little catch here on the back. This is for your ramps to click into. Um, for what I use it for and for what some of you guys might use it for, you'll find that a lot of stuff gets trapped in here when you dump the trailer. Uh, mulch, dirt, rocks, uh, in my case, junk, you know, little pieces of glass or little, uh, just little pieces of debris and junk get caught in there when you dump the trailer. So when you put the body back down before you leave, you know, or hit the road, you've got to take your hand and kind of sweep all this out and get all the junk out of there. Otherwise it will just sit in there and start to rust away or possibly fall out onto the roadway, which could uh, lead you to getting a ticket or, you know, cause, cause other problems. So it's just kind of one of those things. It's just a little bit inconvenient. Otherwise the trailer is pretty nice. Uh, it has been working well for what I need it for. So you can see areas like this, like this top cap here for the top rail of the trailer. You can see there's a big gap right here where it was laid on top of the door panel. Again, you've got a really bad weld here with a lot of porosity in it. It's not welded all the way down along through here. Um, and then it's just kind of a, a loose corner there. So. Again, the biggest thing for me on this trailer is the fit and finish. It's just really doesn't seem to be there. It's just not great. Um, I like the LED lighting, like how it's slim. It's bright. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, again, the wheels and tires that they put on the trailer, really nice. Um, again, you can see the wheels holding up really, really nice. Still shiny and clean. The axles, on the other hand, um, you know, 
a year and a half in and there's quite a bit of surface rust on here and they just don't look great. Uh, I know that's kind of to be expected, but you know, you can see all the way across on the axle tubes themselves, just a lot of surface rust already. Uh, so again, I feel like I'm gonna have to get under here almost every year and sand and paint or undercoat in some way a lot of these items underneath the trailer. Uh, again, this is the other safety bar. You can see where this bar lays in the resting position on this frame rail. It's rubbing the paint on the frame rail. It's rubbing the paint on the bar and causing it to rust already. So that's just one of those things. They, they do have nice welded steps on here. This is nice when the body's down and you need to get access to the front of the trailer to throw something over the side or something like that. You've got these nice steps. They're pretty heavy duty and so far they're holding up well. In regards to the built-in battery tender or charger I showed you, it's got a nice plug right here on the back. Just plug your extension cord right into there, set it and forget it, and you're good to go in between uses keeps that battery charged up really well. I do wish that this pump box was not welded to the frame of the trailer the way that it is because if the box ever gets mangled, it ever gets you know something heavy dropped on it or it ever rusts out or anything like that where it becomes uh, unusable or unsightly, instead of just unbolting it and throwing on a new generic pump box, you're gonna have to cut these welds, uh, then you're gonna have to repaint the frame then you're gonna have to get a new box and then you're gonna have to either re-weld it or drill holes and bolt it. Uh, so I feel like being that this is something that oftentimes gets replaced at some point throughout the life of a dump trailer, I just wish it wasn't welded to the trailer uh, because replacing it is just gonna be that much more difficult. But all in all guys, um, I do really like the trailer. It came with the tarp. Uh, it did not come with the spare wheel and tire. I did add that, although it did come with the spare tire mount so I just had to get the hardware those two bolts there that I've used I know I'm missing a nut on the bottom one um, but again it came with the tarp the tarp works really well um, it's greasable has a, a zerk fitting on it so it works pretty well you gotta pull it back and then wind it back up but that's okay for what I use it for you can see the trailer has D-rings. It has one in each corner, front and rear. It also has one in the front right in the center. Again, I don't really use the D-rings because I don't tie equipment down in this trailer or chain equipment down in this trailer. However, it is nice to have it there if I ever needed it. I find that for me, sometimes the D-rings get in the way when I'm dumping loads of junk at the landfill because bigger items like dressers or couches um, that sit flush up against the wall when they go to slide out the back of the trailer they catch that d-ring on the rear and that blocks the whole load then from dumping out of the trailer I've got to go back and manually push it off that d-ring and then try again so sometimes it can be a hassle to have those d-rings back there but all in all I like that they're there I could cut them out if I really wanted to but I think I'm just gonna leave them there for now so Anyway guys, I think that about covers it as far as my one year review of this Griffin GT712 dump trailer. Uh, I think I've hit mainly all the things that I like or dislike about the trailer and just kind of giving you a good overview of it. If you are thinking about purchasing a Griffin dump trailer and have any questions or concerns, would like my uh, first hand experience or, or opinion on if it will work for your needs or um, you know any further questions about the welds or quality of the trailer itself feel free to reach out send me a message or leave a comment below and i'll get back to you so again guys if you have any questions i uh, want my first hand experience or comments about this trailer if you're looking at purchasing one or you have one um, again it's a really budget friendly dump trailer um, i just started this business and i knew what my weight capacities and what my use case for this trailer was and I couldn't justify spending $15,000 on a dump trailer to just haul junk around. So, so I think for the price point, it is a good trailer for what it is. I think that you definitely get your money's worth. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not as good as a big name brand trailer. 
uh, but I think it is adequate for my needs and could be adequate for a lot of you guys if uh, you know if you're honest with yourself about what you're going to use it for and what you need. Um, this trailer out the door a year and a half ago uh, out the door was less than $8,500. Right now it's selling for I think ten five before tax title and tax. So they've definitely increased in value. Uh, dump trailers hold their value really well which is good. Um, this particular brand like I said has actually increased in value in the last year and a half as has everything. But regardless compared to you know 12 13 even 15 grand or more for a higher end brand the same size a 7 by 12 with four foot sides um, I just couldn't justify it and I don't need it for what I do and you might not either so so anyway guys I think it's a good budget friendly trailer for what you may need it works for my needs there are some things that I'm gonna have to keep an eye on the rust the welds stuff like that again if I was hauling stone or heavy excavators and I was loading this thing up to 10, 11, 12,000 pounds on a regular basis, I probably would go with a more high-end trailer. For hauling a ton to two tons of junk around uh, within a 20 to 30 mile radius of my house, this really suits me perfectly. It keeps me from having to hand unload everything that I load at my junk removal jobs, uh, which is the main reason I wanted this trailer. Um, and you know I really for me to save several thousand dollars I think that it's worth it to have to maybe climb under there every year every spring and throw a little black spray paint or a little bit of rubberized undercoating on some areas to keep it lasting and keep it fresh as long as I can so anyway shoot me a like comment below if you have any questions about this trailer and you're thinking about getting one I'd be happy to answer them and give you my honest upfront review and uh, concerns that I may have in regards to what you're going to use it for. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching Beer Budget Moto. Stay tuned for the next one, and uh, we'll see you then. Take care.